Oh, they moved it. What? The motor in. Didn't used to be on Widgery Road. We're supposed to be patrolling Widgery Road, Suze. We'll call it a detour. All right, what's the deal? You've been weird all morning. It's personal, all right? Look, that's fine, but as long as I know what to say when I have to cover for you. There it is, thank God. What's going on? Brad? Brad, it's me. Honey, are you in there? Sus. Brad? Sus. You're not going to charge him, are you? We'll see. Trip down to the station should give him time to calm down, though. That's right. Look after your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend, for God's sake, Martin. Yeah, right. Hey, um, the guy in room 15, do you know where he is? He went out for a walk after lunch. Well, funny way to put it, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, I know. Shame, good-looking young bloke like that being crippled. What's he done? Not much you can get up to in a wheelchair, I wouldn't think, eh? Hey? <laughs> is he wanted, is he? He's my husband. You follow us. She's my wife. What does he think he's doing round there at the flat, messing about? What were they doing, Mr Stratton? They were having a cosy cup of tea. Mate, you can't thump someone for having a cup of tea. Yeah, well, how come he's around there exactly when I'm supposed to be in St David's getting my brakes done? And then I come back, and there she is entertaining. I wasn't entertaining. Not the way he means it. I'm doing ancient civilizations at TAFE in St David's. Digby's my teacher. Homework then, was it? I missed the last session, if you must know. The Aztecs. Digby was kind enough to drop around some notes so that I can catch up. You miss the Aztecs, you don't know what's going on when you get to the Incas. <laughs> right. Uh, is your husband usually violent? No, no way. He's going through a tough time at the moment. He's feeling a bit insecure, that's all. Has he ever been violent toward you? Never. Our marriage is fine. He loves me. That's why he gets jealous, I suppose. Oh. How's it going? Yeah, I think we've got it figured out. Need your office back? Yes, well, I suppose I can let it go this time. Don't do me any favours. Hey, Martin, you were told your release is conditional on good behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Look, the man's just giving you a break. Just shake hands with him, will you? Yeah, sure. Let's be civilised. Yes, well, you might do well to come to a few of my lectures, Martin. Yeah, and you might do well to stay away from my missus. Oh, for goodness no, no, no. You snotty pot. Hey, 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 you See, break you it up. Guy, break it up. He was taking the piss. No, I don't have to wait. Settle down. He, was that that he started it. Clear. You don't settle anything with your fists. No. You don't win any respect with them either. If you want your marriage to work, you have to talk to her, listen to her. He's a teacher. He's better with words than I am. Maybe, but she's not interested in him. You've got the wrong impression somehow. Now, look, I don't want to have to lock you up, so like I said, talk to her, listen. That's the only way you get things sorted. I just want to see if you're okay. Yeah, well, now you know. Please. What happened? It's not important. It's just. Sex. You can say the word, you know. Well, maybe I should have. 
Maybe we both should be talking a whole lot more. You can't just solve this kind of stuff with a nice logical chat. But running away is a better idea. Getting it on with someone else. I'm not pretending what you did didn't hurt me. I want you to come home. Yeah, look, I'm, I think I'm better out of your hair for a while. You know? Well, that's the way you want it. It's better than us shouting at each other all the time, like mine host and hostess. Thin walls. Well, you could have come home. The office there. Hey, how'd it go? Yeah, he's um, he's calmed down a bit. He says the thing about coming home when he's got his head together. Hey, um, apparently that manager and his wife are keeping their customers awake with their yelling. Oh, well, so much for our marriage is fine. Yeah, and the fights sound like a regular occurrence. You reckon it might be the wife's turn next? He's a pretty physical sort of guy. Well, there's not much we can do about it now we've let him go. Same old story. Pretend everything's okay and it'll all go away. And it does until the next time. I hate the mystery. Mm. Oh, here she is, Miss Seconman. Yeah, suffering from door knocker's elbow. <laughs> And how was St David's? Oh, wonderful. Over 300 doors and one set of knuckles. Oh, well, it's got some dragging on the ground. Yes, well, thank you for loaning me out. Anyway, My pleasure. Uh, Attila Addison said to remind you that Rusty will be over at 9am sharp for his station inspection. Is this tomorrow? Oh, yes, 9am sharp. He'll be looking for ammo to shoot down my sergeant's application. Let's not get paranoid. It's a routine inspection. When it comes to Rusty and me, nothing is routine. He wouldn't let a personal dislike get in the way of a professional judgment. <laughs> I want Dark and Bright. No, no, no. Yeah, good one, fellas. Good <laughs> on you. G'day, Marisata. Hi, you, Chris. Hi. Hey. 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 Mm. What are you looking so pleased about? I finally managed to get the wedding ducks in a row. Oh, you did? Well, coordinated with my folks so we can set a date. March 17th. Hey, okay. Hey. Congratulations. Beautiful. That's St. Patrick's Day. You have to get married in green. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to come. I'll try dragging us away. So, finally, I've got something. Good to look forward to after what will be my non-promotion. Oh, Happily oh, ever after. Right. You'll be right. Same again? Uh, not for me. I've got a few things to do. All right. Uh, I'd like to tell you about how I met my wife, Susie. My incredible, my sexy, my stunning wife. Hey, Brucey. Look. Okay, um, all right. Look, I was, I was on Great Keppel Island. Uh, I was at the pool bar sipping a cocktail. Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for telling this story, aren't I? Yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Susie walks up to the side of the pool wearing this eensy weensy bikini. <laughs> Looking like a million bucks. Like, oh, God. Dives into the pool just like a goddess. Um, heads straight for me. And while she came up to the surface, her bikini top stayed on the bottom. <laughs> and that's how I fell immediately in love with Susie, my wife. Susie, my life. I thought you might not fancy cooking for one. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm not really hungry. And I brought this. And I cannot finish it all by myself. So you deal with the pizza and I'll open the wine. I'll, I'll do the wine. I'm into roll reversal. Uh, wedding video. You should be a detective. I was feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, I know. I thought you might need cheering up. Mm, good thing. Uh, there's 
Cricket on the regular TV. I... No, 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 no. I like winning videos. Give me a pleasant reminder that I'm single. So watch this one every once in a while. Well, it's got to be hard for you both, Sis. Isn't there someone that you could talk to, or...? <laughs> I tried that, didn't I? You know, we haven't had sex since he got out of hospital. Not successfully, anyway. <sighs> Maybe it's me. Well, that's crap, you know. It's probably because it's really important to him. I mean, that always makes things difficult. Well, why should it be so hard? I mean, he used to love being with me. He had the... I'll get the plates. Pizza's getting cold. Your coffee, sir? Thank you. Sugar? Ah, uh, one. It's already stirred. Thank you. Clockwise? I think we'll start with a brief book list. That's all right with you, Acton Sergeant. Not a problem, <clears throat> sir. One sugar, stirred. Yeah, it's a mug. There's nowhere to put a spoon. Yeah, well, I can think of a place. Brown noser. Let's see what he finds wrong with this. Your coffee. It's good stuff. I don't need looking after. Did you give him the good stuff? You should have given him instant. I've just had Digby Riggs' mother on the phone. Ancient civilizations. Huh? Apparently, he still lives with his ancient mum. Oh, that figures. Anyway, he uh, didn't come home last night after his TAFE course. He might start by looking for his car. Green Chimera, OFI 310. Looks like he's been rear-ended and shunted off the road, eh? There's blood here. He's hurt. Could have staggered off. Or been dragged. Let me guess where our next port of call is. It's good to see you conserving water, Mr. Stratton. Dead insects, they get all over the bull bar. They're a bugger. Hey, you haven't seen your mate Digby, have you? Yesterday, down at the station with a tissue up his nose. Not since. You're back. What's going on? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Digby Riggs is missing. What? Oh, I'll get you a hanky, will I? What's happened to him? Well, we don't know. But he didn't come home from TAFE last night. Did you attend his class? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't miss it. No, of course bloody not. We found his car in a ditch with the back smashed in. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, sir? No. I promised to behave, remember? It was a green car. Same green as this paint. You know the way? It's got something to do with Mr. E's disappearance. Yeah, well, we found evidence that might prove that he ran him off the road. Let me know how you go. Who are there? Oh, you'll have to wait out here, Mrs. Stratton. He says he doesn't know anything about it. So how did I go? No omissions, no mistakes, so far as I can see. Which usually translates as faultless. Sir? See, I review. Not just yet, Hashem. <laughs> Property book. We'll continue in your office, Croydon. Oh, yes, fine. <laughs> no problem. OK, Martin. This is how it works. We're going to send the sponge off to forensics, along with samples of paint taken from Digby Riggs's car, which is impounded right now. They can tell us not only if the colours are match and that it's auto paint, but what year and batch number it is. Now, do you want to wait in the cells while they do the test, or do you want to make it easier for all of us? I went over to the TAFE last night just to check up on them. I wasn't going to do anything. I wasn't going to make any trouble. But... Well, I take a squeeze through the window, and there they are, having this intimate chat. Class is breaking up, ready to go, but they're head to head in the corner. Okay. So what did you do? I lost it, didn't I? So I jumped in the ute. 
I drove round the car park and I took it out on his car. I rammed into it a couple of times and then I drove off. Yeah, good story. Doesn't account for the blood in the car, though. What blood? Well, we found his car in a ditch out on Ketcher's Gorge Road. With blood on the dash? He was nowhere near it when I rammed it. Well, tell us the truth, Martin. You followed him and you rammed him off the road, didn't you? <laughs> no! I smashed the car in the car park. I never followed him anywhere. Martin was already home when I got back last night. What time was that? Straight after the lecture? Yes. Well, well, no, not exactly. I went for a coffee with some of the girls from the class. Right, and how long did that take? About 45 minutes. And it was definitely some classmates you had coffee with? I felt like I needed cheering up after calling it off. Calling it off with who? With Digby. So there was something between you? Yes. But it was just a fling, that's all. You love your husband. Having a fling isn't a good way of showing it. Do you love him? He's... I'm not a nun. I have needs. Door knocked all the houses out on Ketcher's Gorge Road. Nothing. Nobody saw any car accident. Nobody seen Rick since. Well, Stratton's pretty volatile, so we could be looking at a murder or an abduction here. Well, he could be telling the truth. And why would he start now? I'll get onto the line search. PJ, do you mind if I use your office? Uh, Leanne's in there. Oh, look, help me here, for God's sake. Push Stratton a bit harder. No way am I giving you permission to search my place. Fine. If you won't give us permission, we'll get a warrant. Same deal as before. You wait in the cells till it's processed. Fine. Go ahead. Be my guest. Nobody will miss me anyway. <sighs> That's not true. Leanne's still waiting out there. Yeah, to find out what happened to Loverboy. To be here for you. Martin, you've got it all wrong. The intimate little chat you saw was her telling Riggs she didn't want him. She loves her husband. Oh, sure. Fine. <laughs> if you're too busy feeling sorry for yourself to see that she really cares about you... It's your loss. I'll get the warrant. You're right. She said that to you? Yeah, she did. And you believed her? Yes, I believe her. We used to be really good together, you know. I'm sure you still could be. Do you love her? Yeah, of course I do. I wouldn't be in this mess if I didn't, would I? I'm an idiot. So start doing things right. Yeah, OK, fair enough, but I'll come with you, all right? You left them behind. Well, no evidence. And they seem to have sorted things out. You sound confident. Years of experience. Oh, yes, and how long have you been a member? I meant as a woman, boss. <laughs> ah. Oh, well, you certainly beat me there. Well, and he knows that there's still the matter of the criminal damage to deal with, and we've impounded his car. Any results from the line search? Uh, not as yet, no. Uh, Inspector, all done? Out here, yes. CI next. And I take it you're happy with uh, everything so far? Well, I would have to say that, much to my surprise, everything is in very good order, yes. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And you've uh, finished with my office? Yes, I have. Thank you. Clearance rates? Lovely. Uh, if I could just have a moment of the inspector's time first, PJ, uh, in my office. Inspector, I just... Uh, have to say that I'm not surprised everything's in good shape. But it's in good shape because uh, because Ben Stewart is an excellent acting sergeant. Uh, he, he does a good job and uh, he deserves a fair go. Well, I hope you're not suggesting, Tom, that I give him a go that was anything but fair. No, no, not at all. I'm sure that any personal problems you may have had with him, you've put behind you. Of course. And uh, I'm equally sure that you'll take into account the fact that he's... Uh, Got his life together. He, uh, you, you know, he's uh, engaged. Yes, I had heard to a local Salvation Army girl. Yes. Well, let's hope she helps him consolidate his rehabilitation. Let's hope so. And I'm sure your fairness in dealing with him will be a big help. If you're so sure of all these things, why are we having this conversation? 
I just wanted to express my confidence in your even-handedness, sir. Well, that's very gratifying, Tom. Very gratifying indeed. Well, the printer rang. What's nobody want embossed or plain paper? Yeah, go the embossed. It's much classier. Mm -hmm. well, this is your fiance, I hope, Stuart. Inspector, this is Captain Marissa Craddock. Hmm. Russell, Falcon Price, how do you do? Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Passion. Clearance rates. Yes, sir. So that's a legendary inspector. Mm. He seems like a perfectly rational, normal human being. See, this is what I love about her. She always looks for the best in people. Mm, that's what makes it possible for her to love you. <laughs> oh, <good on>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ben. I was wondering if I could get an early mark. Is everything OK? Yeah, I've got a date, that's all. <laughs> Go for it. Thought you might like some dinner? We don't have to do this now, you know. No, it's not okay. I just want to be close to you. Get off me, sis, please. Baby, let me help. Huh? Get off me! Leave me alone! I don't want your sympathy and I don't want you! Well, it's just a half a centimetre to the left. There you go. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay? Yeah, let's, let's start now. Yeah, no, I've got a ruler in the desk. Selection panel takes no prisoners, you realise this? Yeah, well, if they go on appearance, you're class with flying colours. I should be so lucky. Rusty's probably poured the poison already. If he gets his way, I won't make sergeant this century. Cheers. <laughs> hey, I'll... Let's see what the story is. Susie, if you need to take some time off or anything, I, I can talk to the boss. What's he been saying to you? Who? Jonesy. Nothing. You seemed upset when you came in, so I... It's my business, all right? Did Brad do that? I told you. It's my business. Bloody hell, Susie. What is going on? 
Look, we're your friends here. There are some things that you have to talk about. I'm dealing with it. How? Are you? If he's hitting you? Susie, I have seen the bottom of a few bottles myself. I know what's down there. If you want me to talk to Brad, I'm sure I can. I'll, I'll try to get him this to see This is not reason. to do with his drinking. He got upset and he pushed me. He didn't mean to hurt me. Yeah, maybe not, but he did. Ben, stay out of it. You will only make things worse. All I'm saying is you can't keep pushing people away like that. Ben just wants to help. I know, and so do you, and so does the boss, and so does Digger the bloody dog. Look, all I need is some time and some space. Can we just do our jobs and forget it? Leanne? Martin? Police? Mr. Stratton. Mr. Stratton. Hey, what are you doing? You can't just wander in here. Your door was open. We're looking for your wife. We had another bust up. She took off last night. Have a look in the bedroom if you want. Bust up? Is that how the table got knocked over? I didn't thump her. I went down the pub. When I came back, she was gone. I was a bit pissed. I fell over this stupid thing. No, I just, just leave it. The mother gave it to us. It's a piece of junk. I don't even like it. Can you explain this to us? That's a rubbish bin. You put rubbish in it. The blood. I never saw any bandage before. I didn't even know it was there. Did you hurt your wife, Mr Stratton? No! No! What happened when you got back from the pub? Ah, I don't remember. I was pretty shickered. And then I drank a few... A few more... <laughs> We've sent the bandage to Forensic and there's a general broadcast out on Leanne's car. Well, missing from the motel. Yeah. Joe's checking with the guests to see if they heard anything. Good on you. Uh, boss, Carla at the commercial backed up his story. He was there till stumps and got smashed. What did you get out of him? Last night's fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, we tossed for the cleaning. And you lost. Congratulations. Where is he now? He's in the cell, sleeping it off. And his wife's still missing. Years of experience, you said. Well, I can't hold him if Carla supported his story. Well, the guest at the motel supported his story too. Hmm? Bloke nearest the office said he heard a row early evening and then Martin took off and all he heard later on was a noise of Martin coming back in. Hmm. So he wasn't lying. I mean, he could have assaulted her before he went to the pub. But she said he's never hit her. He doesn't strike me as a wife beater. Did he do that to you? Oh, I know I did that all by myself, boss. Look. Whether he assaulted his wife or not, she's still missing under suspicious circumstances. Yes, but PJ's right. We can't hold him on circumstantial evidence. So you'd better let him go before you have to mop out the cells as well. Ben, hey. you the lunches? Yeah, if they're ordered, I thought I might come pick them up. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just on my way back from the sergeant's panel thing. Really? How'd it go? Pretty well, I think. No flags on my file from Inspector Falcon Price. Amazing. So I reckon that I might squeak through. <laughs> That's fantastic. Good on you. So make mine a double. Extra sandwich, thanks. I'll put it in the box. Hey, Chris. How long has he been here? Most of the morning. I suggested he switch to light, but he's not all that keen. Hello, hey, Brad. How's things? Things are fine. Things are fantastic. Good beer, very nice. Yeah, I used to like it myself quite a bit. Hmm. So, not for another drink driving lecture, are we? No, I'm sure you get a taxi if you need one. <laughs> yeah, right. Wheelchair service. Listen, 
Mate, it's, uh, it may be none of my business, but... When someone starts a sentence with, it may be none of my business, it usually is none of their business. So why don't you leave me and my beer alone to enjoy each other's company? It's just uh, Susie seemed pretty upset when she came into work this morning. Oh, yeah. You were able to offer her some comfort, were you? She's a colleague and I care about her, so... Oh, no, sure, can... no, I bet you do. She's cute, isn't she? You know that's not what I mean. Do I? I know you want to find out. I can tell you this much, mate. She's better in bed than I am. Or you, probably. Turn around, turn around. Show us your back. Hey? No knives sticking out. Go to see if you know uh, No, no rugs pulled out from under one either. Ah. Uh. Hey, listen, um, when I was down at the pub... Why have we got a lemming I'm trying to give them up. I know, I know, that's mine. It's a celebration. Oh, okay. Well, you could have bought one for all of us. Hey, yes, we well, I, I didn't think that that would be fair on the boss. Oh, thank you for your consideration. I'm very happy okay. with the salad sandwich. <laughs> that was Paul Air. They're out doing a drugs recce and they spotted Leanne's car. Lots of good spots to hide a body. Yeah, or two. Let's see if we can find her, eh? Drop it now. Drop it. No, no, he's right. I'm going to kill him. Oh, don't be an idiot. I've got a gun, Martin. Right. Now, can someone tell me what the hell is going on? You know we've had 50 coppers out there scouring the scrubland where we found your car. Well, I'm sorry, but it wasn't my fault. I just got into a panic when that idiot husband of hers tried to kill me. Oh, well, I'll be very careful what you're saying, sir, because you are accusing somebody of attempted murder. Well, I know what I'm doing. That's why I demanded to see a detective. I mean, no disrespect. So how did he try to kill you? Well, <laughs> I mean, isn't it obvious? I mean, there I am, driving home after my lecture, when suddenly I am blinded by these lights on, on high beam in my rear vision. He must have just crept up behind me with his lights off and then he powers them on and then rams me. Who? Well, Martin Stratton. Well, if you were blinded by the high beam, how did you know that it was him? Well, because he didn't just stop there, did he? I mean, you know, after he shunted me into the ditch, he, he gets out of his car with a tyre lever and then, then comes at me. I mean, that's how I ended up with this. The blood was in the car. Yes. Well, that's where he hit me, you know. Uh, I was in a daze. Fortunately, I, I rolled over the other side and then got out and uh, ran into the bush. Sure it was him? Yes. Oh, well, I mean, you can't mistake that four-wheel drive of his. I mean, I, I saw it. Uh, and there were evidence of a rear ender there, too. I mean, go and have a look. I mean, and you saw him try to kill me before with that poker. So where did you go after you got away? Well, I uh, booked into a hotel. Mm -hmm. Bided my time. Mm -hmm. What'd you do then? He came to my place. What? Digby. Me and Martin had just had another almighty row. He's gone off to the pub, then Digby turns up, bleeding all over the place with this useless bandage he's tried to stick on his head. He says that Martin's tried to kill him and he wants me to take off with him while we still can. But uh, hadn't you just broken off with Digby the night before? Yes. I was really mad at Martin over this latest argument. Then when I saw what he'd done, I thought the hell with it. So I agreed. I rebandaged Digby's head and we took off in my car. So how did Martin find you at the guest house? I get home, the phone's ringing. It's her. She says that she wants to find out whether what that slime bag told her was true about me running him off the road. And what did you say? Same thing I said to you, the truth. I rammed his car in the car park. I never ran him off the road. And what did she say to that? Well, I must have convinced her better than I did you. Because she says she's sorry. And then she tells me where she is. And she says she's going to sort things out with Slimey and come home. But you decided not to wait, right? Bloody oath. And when I get there, they're having another titter tit in front of the fire. So I grab the poker. And the rest you know. Well, we don't know anything, Mr Stratton. All we do know is that some bloke out there accusing you of attempted murder, so it's your word against his. Stale, mate. Right. Boss, can I have a word with Mrs Stratton alone? I'd like to get those years of experience working a bit better. I'll make myself a cup of tea. I'm getting used to this anyway. This isn't just about Digby, is it? 
All this fighting with your husband, Digby's only part of it, right? There are private things in people's lives, you know. I know. You told me. I love my husband. I'm sure you do. But... I'm sure he loves me too, but... Like I said, he's not been... You know... In bed. For months now. I see. Months. You don't. You don't know what it's like. He's changed completely. He won't get help. Listen, I don't think he tried to kill Digby. I believe him, but the evidence against him doesn't look good. I believe him too. I don't want him to go to jail. I think Digby really loves you too. I don't care. Well, I know you don't. So maybe that's how we solve this whole thing. What I was saying in front of the fire at the guest house, I meant it. Oh. I don't love you, I love my husband. Oh. But if you do honestly love me, you'll tell the truth about Martin, about the person that I do love. Well, I'm sorry, I lied. When I walked into that car park and I saw the damage that had been done to my car, I knew straight away who'd done it. Mm -hmm. Her husband. So there was no tail ender? No. No, I, I faked the accident. When I drove the car into the ditch and you know, I bashed my head, I, I was quite happy. I, Blood everywhere, and I thought it'd make it look even more convincing. I'm sorry. I lied. Never about loving you. Never about that. If you would both sign. Are you satisfied with your treatment by the police here today? Yeah, oh, true lover. Eh? And years of experience. Well done. So, we go now? Yes, you can go. Come on, love. She told me she spilled her guts to you about everything. Hope you know how to keep things to yourself. It's all a discretion, Mr Stratton. That's me. Um, so are counsellors. Sure. Your wife wants you to see one. Yeah, yeah, I suggest you take her advice. Right, I'll just go before you. Mm -hmm. Suze, yeah, it's Chrissy for you. Chris, hi. Is he okay? Right, yeah, no, don't worry, I'll come right over. Oh, I'm gonna go. Susie, I think I know what this might be about. Brad was down at the pub at lunchtime. Maybe I should come with you. Then thanks for the offer, but I'm. He's not really... a friend talking here. I'm your sergeant. I am coming with you. You can't refuse to serve me. I can, and I am read the sign. I'm not drunk. You can only refuse to serve me if I'm drunk. I can refuse to serve you if I don't like your tie. Now settle down and stop smashing my glasses. Dad, what are you doing? Oh, look, it's a dynamic duo. Oh, come to save me. Come on, mate. Just calm down. Let's take your heart. over there. You've had plenty enough, mate. Come and on. you know. Come you on. told me. Really you know. It's all right. Mate, just get him out of here. Yeah, oh, 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 this is great. Yeah, some do the cripple act. Oh, my God. Come on. Yeah, go on, you cow, mate. Why don't you arrest me? Grab the chair. You bastard! Right. Don't you think I know what's going on? I'm oh, stupid, you know. It's all right. You're a great, big, brave, bloody member. Perfect description for you, mate. A bloody member. Come on up. Come on. We're pushing forward. That's it. Come on up we go. That's it. Good mate. Come on, get the car. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. <clears throat> There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'll um, undress him and get him to bed. You need a hand? No, I might as well let him hang on to some dignity. What bit he's got left. Susie. I can do it. Yeah. That's all right. What are you doing? Putting you to bed. Leave off. I don't need anything from Brad. you. Brad. Leave off. Brad, what, what are you doing, baby? You're hurting me. 
Everything okay in there? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I love you. You still love me too, still, don't you? Of course I do. Say it. I still love you. So much. So much. It's all right. It's all right. You okay? He's asleep. You want to stay here? No, I, I reckon he's going to be out of it for a few hours. So I'll come. I'll come back to work. I'll take you back. You sign off. You come back here. You be with him. Come on. I'll sign you out, eh? Oh, there you are. Marissa. Uh, phones are switched over, computers are off, and so am I. Might see ya. Yeah, dinner date with the thingamies from the church. I'm so sorry. Don't think Keith and Jane will take it to be called the thingamies. It's my fault. I'm really sorry. It's fine, don't worry. You guys go ahead and, and I'll lock up. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? I've got my car here anyway. I'll catch you up. Yeah, but don't be long. No, no, two minutes. That's all it takes. Susie, can you grab the book? I'll sign my gun in. Susie? My gun's gone. Brad's got it. He must have taken it when I was putting him to bed. Brad! I'll do this. It's okay. He's not here. His chair's gone. Should be looking for him. No, you need to be here. Just, just in case he comes. What if back. he's lying? What if he's lying somewhere in a ditch with his? He's hurt himself. I'll get on to PJ and the others. They will find him. There's only so many places you can go in that state in a wheelchair. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, sit down. I want you to try to stop imagining the worst. Okay. I'll get them to patrol all the streets and check all the pubs. They will find him. They're going to know about the gun. It's my fault. Susie, I have to tell them. You know that. Hey, come here. It's OK. Everything is going to be OK. Just colleagues, eh? Baby. Brad. Brad. I was only worried about you, mate. So, what's the real story? You're having it off, aren't you? The two of you. Brad, you're drunk. The rest of me might not work too well, but my eyes are fine! I know what's going on! Brad, you've got it wrong, mate. There's no, 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 you stay here. with her. You bloody one you stay with her, mate. What are you going to do, shoot me? <laughs> I, know, huh? I, was, I was in the job, mate. I know the move. Split the target. It's not going to work, pal, all right? Hey, 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 hey! Put it down! Hey. Put the gun down, Oh, hey, yeah, I know Put that one, too, yeah. It ain't going to work, pal. You want to shoot me? Go ahead, shoot me! Put it down, now! You... Brad! <laughs> Put it down! <laughs> Put it down. Oh, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Brad. Brad, no! It's all right. I'm not going to kill you. She's the one who's supposed to be married to me. Brad, no! Don't do this! Put it down! Put the gun down now! Put it down! Brad! <laughs>
Oh, they moved it. What? The motor in. Didn't used to be on Widgery Road. We're supposed to be patrolling Widgery Road, Sus. We'll call it a detour. All right, what's the deal? You've been weird all morning. It's personal, all right? Look, that's fine, but as long as I know what to say when I have to cover for you. There it is, thank God. What's going on? Brad? Brad, it's me. Honey, are you in there? Sus! Brad? Sus! You're not going to charge him, are you? We'll see. Trip down to the station should give him time to calm down, though. That's right. Look after your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend, for God's sake, Martin. Yeah, right. Hey, um, the guy in room 15, do you know where he is? He went out for a walk after lunch. Well, funny way to put it, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, I know. Shame, good-looking young bloke like that being crippled. What's he done? Not much you can get up to in a wheelchair, I wouldn't think, eh? Hey? <laughs> is he wanted, is he? He's my husband. You follow us. She's my wife. What does he think he's doing round there at the flat, messing about? What were they doing, Mr Stratton? They were having a cosy cup of tea. Mate, you can't thump someone for having a cup of tea. Yeah, well, how come he's around there exactly when I'm supposed to be in St David's getting my brakes done? And then I come back, and there she is entertaining. I wasn't entertaining. Not the way he means it. I'm doing ancient civilizations at TAFE in St David's. Digby's my teacher. Homework then, was it? I missed the last session, if you must know. The Aztecs. Digby was kind enough to drop around some notes so that I can catch up. You miss the Aztecs, you don't know what's going on when you get to the Incas. <laughs> right. Uh, is your husband usually violent? No, no way. He's going through a tough time at the moment. He's feeling a bit insecure, that's all. Has he ever been violent toward you? Never. Our marriage is fine. He loves me. That's why he gets jealous, I suppose. Oh. How's it going? Yeah, I think we've got it figured out. Need your office back? Yes, well, I suppose I can let it go this time. Don't do me any favours. Hey, Martin, you were told your release is conditional on good behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Look, the man's just giving you a break. Just shake hands with him, will you? Yeah, sure. Let's be civilised. Yes, well, you might do well to come to a few of my lectures, Martin. Yeah, and you might do well to stay away from my missus. Oh, for goodness no, no, no. You snotty pot. Hey, 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 you See, break you it up. Guy, break it up. He was taking oh, the piss. No, 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 no. Settle down. He, was that that he started it. Clear. You don't settle anything with your fists. No. You don't win any respect with them either. If you want your marriage to work, you have to talk to her, listen to her. He's a teacher. He's better with words than I am. Maybe, but she's not interested in him. You've got the wrong impression somehow. Now, look, I don't want to have to lock you up, so like I said, talk to her, listen. That's the only way you get things sorted. I just want to see if you're okay. 